Taiwan greeted Nancy Pelosi as a true friend when the U.S. House Speaker visited the country in August. But when President Tsai Ing-wen hosted Pelosi for lunch in Taipei, two men at the table were a reminder that the friendship is coming under strain, Morris Chang, founder of Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, and Mark Liu, chair of the world's largest contract chipmaker. The global semiconductor industry is now dominated by Taiwan, thanks to TSMC's meteoric rise. Chang told Pelosi in stark terms that Washington's efforts to rebuild chip manufacturing at home were doomed to fail. He was pretty blunt, and the esteemed guests were a bit surprised, says one person who heard the conversation. TSMC now finds itself at the center of both a tug of war between Washington and Taipei and the fiercest front in the new Cold War between China and the US. Nicknamed the godfather of the chip industry in Taiwan, 91 year old Chang is defending his life's work. However, recently, the old man has become more and more panicked, and TSMC is falling into the biggest crisis in history. As doubts intensified over the outlook for the global semiconductor industry following US sanctions on a swath of China's tech champions, on October 11, the stock price of TSMC shares plummeted by more than 8% in a single day, the largest single-day drop in 28 years' history. Nanya Technology, one of the world's biggest makers of dynamic random access memory, said the market had been unexpectedly terrible for the past quarter and warned about uncertainties ahead, citing especially weak demand from China. The market condition is very much weaker than expected. The biggest pressure now is coming from China, where all the segments from smartphones, computers and consumer electronics to servers are all very sluggish. Li Peng, Nanya Technology president said. Today, I would like to analyze the possible reasons for TSMC's predicament. My analysis may not be all right, if I am wrong, please let me know in the comment area. Okay, let's get started. First, TSMC was invited to build a factory in the United States, but the promised subsidy turned out to be an rubber check. In order to regain control of the semiconductor field, the United States has begun to vigorously develop the local semiconductor industry, but the United States today is already different from the United States 20 years ago. Not only is the cost of manufacturing wafers high, but the local experience talents are scarce, so the United States regards TSMC as the savior to save its IC destiny. In order to successfully persuade TSMC to build a factory in the United States, the United States promised to give subsidies. But when TSMC started building an advanced wafer fab in Phoenix, Arizona, the U.S. promised subsidies have been delayed for a long time. Moreover, due to the scarcity of relevant local talents, the fab was postponed halfway through the construction, and the delay time was as long as three to six months. The domestic environment that is not conducive to the development of the semiconductor industry, as well as the repeatedly delayed subsidies, both of them has led to TSMC's growing disappointment with the United States. In addition, the next series of operations in the United States made TSMC more disappointed. What did the United States do? Okay, please continue watching. Second, the United States held a hearing on chip, but TSMC is the only one not being invited. In order to improve the local chip manufacturing capacity and competitiveness, Maria Cantwell, chairman of the U.S. Senate Commerce Committee, held a chip hearing and invited various leaders in the semiconductor field to discuss how to develop the next generation of chip technology. This chip hearing invited Samsung, Intel, Micron, including the CEO of truckmaker Packcar, and the US executives even met with executives from chip makers such as Samsung and Micron. But TSMC was not included in the invited list. In addition to discussing how to develop next generation chip technology, the hearing also explored defects in the chip supply chain and the relationship between the chip field and the competitiveness of the United States. It is obvious that they started to marginalize TSMC. Third, the United States wants to poach people from TSMC in order to fill the talent gap of the local semiconductor industry. Due to the difficulty in recruiting qualified and experienced employees in the United States, the local semiconductor market is facing more than 5,000 job vacancies, and the American think tank suggested that these vacancies can be imported from outside, preferably experienced talents from TSMC. 
when TSMC went to the United States to build a factory, it was also required to hand over some of its technical cores. Obviously, the United States invited TSMC to work for free for the US and take this opportunity to obtain relevant technologies. Seeing that the previous plan did not work, the United States began to find ways to poach people. In addition, in order to stimulate the enthusiasm of local semiconductor manufacturers to build factories, the United States also passed a subsidy bill of 52 billion US dollars so as to reduce the pressure on the builders of local fabs. However, Intel, a local American company, has already built two fabs with a subsidy of $20 billion, and TSMC still has not received a cent. Finally, the main reason why TSMC can maintain stable revenue after losing Huawei's orders is that Huawei's vacated orders have been filled by American companies such as Apple. According to TSMC's financial report data, the revenue contributed by the largest customer last year reached 405.402 billion yuan, an increase of 68.627 billion yuan compared with 2020, an annual increase of 20%, accounting for 26% of the company's revenue, and this customer is Apple. The rise and fall of TSMC has been closely linked to Apple. Apple announced new spring products, driving TSMC's stock price to rebound. Moreover, TSMC's largest market is still the United States, and its revenue exceeded 1 trillion yuan for the first time, reaching 1.01 trillion yuan, an annual increase of about 24%, accounting for 64%. The Taiwan market ranked second, with revenue of 203.963 billion yuan, an annual increase of 58%, accounting for about 12.8%. However, it can be clearly seen from these data that a large part of TSMC's current revenue depends on these US companies, and the initiative is not in its own hands. If one day these US companies interrupt cooperation, then TSMC's revenue will be worrying. All the above signs are showing that TSMC has been really ripped off by the United States. This is why Morris Chang, the founder of TSMC, angrily rebuked when he delivered a speech at the Brookings Institution increasing domestic production of chips in the United States is a wasteful and futile move. Presumably the old gentleman finally realized when he could not get the subsidy at the beginning. The reason why TSMC decided to build an advanced mini factory with a monthly output of 20,000 wafers was mainly to reduce costs. But now, the cost cannot be reduced, and it has to use its own money to build factories for others, TSMC is naturally unhappy. All in all, as the center of semiconductor manufacturing gradually moved to Asia after 2000, the local chip manufacturing industry in the United States had to reduce labor expenditures in order to compete with the semiconductor manufacturing industry with lower labor costs in Asia. The number of students willing to pursue related majors has declined further because of lower wage returns, which has further prompted the chip manufacturing industry to move to places with lower labor costs, such as Asia. After more than 10 years of such a cycle, the current talent pool in the semiconductor manufacturing industry in the United States is very small. It is impossible to revive the local semiconductor manufacturing industry with a one time investment, but requires more than 5 to 10 years of continuous development. And this is why Morris Chan believes that if the United States wants to revive local manufacturing, it needs to pay a high price. Well, thanks for listening. See you next time.